um, Anirudh Herle uh, telling us about selection functions of strong lens algorithms. And so on. Are these your slides? No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Anirudh Herle. Uh, I'm currently a PhD student at Leiden Observatory, but I'm going to talk today about uh, my master's thesis work, which I did at the Max Planck for astrophysics, on the selection functions of uh, strong lens finding neural networks. Uh, so we heard uh, already from Connor a little bit about how uh, lensing can be used for dark matter studies, but there are also many other applications uh, for lensing, including uh, measuring uh, H0, uh, when you have a uh, time-varying source. Uh, and also, since you get a magnified view of a high-redshift galaxy, you can do a lot of interesting um, high source science with uh, lensing. And also, by measuring the slope of the density profile, uh, you can constrain uh, feedback models. Uh, and all of these uh, uh, fields are set to profit from uh, uh, future surveys like Euclid, which is expected to find. 10 to the 5 new strong lenses. Uh, this, is, uh, this represents sort of uh, two orders of magnitude improvement over what we already have. Uh, and um, uh, basically, CNNs are going to be used for, for lens finding. And you have um, lenses and non-lenses, and the network just has to classify uh, these objects. And this, uh, this week, we heard a lot of um, cool applications of machine learning in astronomy. Uh, but my talk is going to be more about uh, the biases that using uh, CNNs can uh, introduce. Uh, so the question that we asked ourselves was, um, are the lenses found by CNNs uh, a biased sample? So what we did was we make three da uh, training data sets with a million images each, split evenly between lenses and non-lenses. Uh, the first data set is sort of the simplest formulation of this problem, where you have an extended uh, source, so you get arcs. Uh, and the lens light model is a simple SOSIC profile. Uh, data set B is basically the same thing, but the lens light model is more complex, is more realistic. It's got uh, spiral arms and star formation regions, basically things that can probably confuse the neural network and make the problem a bit harder. And the uh, last data set is just uh, having a complex lens light model and uh, also is a point source now, so you get uh, galaxy quasar lensing. And the idea is to uh, basically train a ResNet-18 uh, on each of these uh, data sets, and then look at how the distributions of parameters differs from the true distribution, which is our test data set, and the sample that the neural network selects. And we quantify this difference via the uh, KL divergence. And what we find is that uh, basically the network prefers certain kinds of lenses over the others. So if you place a uh, detection th significance threshold, certain lenses are more uh, uh, are present uh, after, beyond this cut. So you get uh, certain parameters that are uh, preferred by the lenses, uh, by the lens finder. And the most important uh, parameter is the Einstein radius. So uh, this makes sense because a larger Einstein radius means that the lens light and the source light is more distinct, making it easier to find these for the network. Uh, but uh, measuring the Einstein radius is essentially a measurement of the mass of the lensing galaxy. So uh, because the network prefers larger Einstein radii, all the mass estimates are going to be biased higher. Uh, and also this limits our uh, ability to study low mass uh, uh, galaxies. Uh, regarding the source, uh, a larger source with a more uh, compact light distribution makes more distinct arcs. So the network uh, is able to find these much easier. So essentially, there is a source side bias, especially when there is more complexity in the lens light model. Uh, what this means is that um, people who will be studying high redshift galaxies are going to see preferentially uh, larger sources with a different lens light profile. And uh, what's interesting is that this is the same effect that the lensing cross-section creates. And the, they already account for this, but not to the extent required with uh, the neural networks in there as well. Uh, the slope of the density profile actually does not influence the network, so feedback model constraints are not going to be biased by the CNN. Uh, and another cool thing was that um, uh, 
uh, the lensed quasar system, they prefer uh, four image systems over two image systems. So uh, higher ellipticity in the lens mass actually creates more quads. So now because of this preference, you get a bias on the uh, lens mass, so higher ellipticities are preferred. Uh, so the basic conclusion is that uh, CNNs can actually bias uh, uh, strong lensing um, samples that are detected, and this has an effect on uh, the science. Uh, yeah, so I'm happy to take uh, questions. Thank you.